back to my channel. Today I'm going to be using this set from Newton's Nook called Winston's Honey Bees. It's a brand new 4x4 set for Newton's Nook. And I'll also be using the Garden Party 6x6 by Pebbles, which has a lot of really nice springy colors to it. So I'm going to start by coloring my image here. I've stamped out a little scene. And I'm beginning with the E44 marker and I'm just going to go ahead and saturate my bear here. This is Winston. So I'm going to just uh, give him a wash on all the parts that are going to be dark brown to get that paper saturated and ready to blend. And then I'm going to go in with my E47 and to begin laying in my shadows. So I'm actually guest designing with Newton's Nook this month and I'm super excited to um, be featured over there. It was so nice of them to ask me to join them. So um, you can stay tuned for a couple more posts from me this month um, for Newton's Nook. But I'm just going in here now and uh, finishing up my shadows and then I'm going to grab my E49 marker which is going to be my darkest and I'm going to lay in just the darkest parts where I really want a lot of contrast. So it's going to be around the edges of his body, um, under his head there, around his neck, where his head would cast a shadow, on the inside of his arms and legs, tops of his feet, places like that. And then I'm just going to go back down in the reverse order. So I'll blend out first with the E47, drawing that E49 out a bit, and uh, just blending the lines there. And then I'll go back with the E44 and just blend all the rest of that in using circular motions to really move that color around and get a nice smooth blend. So next I'm going to begin working on his muzzle and his belly. So I'm grabbing E51, E53, and E55 for that. And because it's such a small area to color in, I'm just going ahead and starting with my darkest color, which is the E55, and I'm just laying in my darkest shadows there. Then I'm going to blend that out with the E53, make sure I have a nice transition there, no harsh lines. And then I'm going to finish up with the E51 and blend that all together. And I'm also going to use the E53 and E51 to color in the wooden spoon that's sticking out of his honey pot. I'll quickly add in a little W9 and W7 to just color in his nose. And then I'm going to take the chisel tip of my BG10 and just start to lay in some sky in the background there. I'm just using that chisel tip so that I can lay down some color very quickly. And then adding some BG11 just under the clouds to define them a little bit. And then I'm going to grab some colorless blender solution and a dried up baby wipe. And I'm just going to squeeze a little bit on there. And I'm going to dab that over the background just to make it blend a little bit better. The clouds were looking a little flat to me, so I decided to grab my C0 and C3 markers and just add a little bit towards the bottom of those clouds to kind of make them look nice and fluffy and a little more three-dimensional. So just blend that out with the C0. And I'm much happier with the way that that looks now. For my honey pot, I decided to grab BG11, BG13, and BG15. And I'm just going to color that into a nice kind of aqua color. Um, but adding that BG15 and 13 is going to make it look different than the sky, much darker than the sky. So again, just laying in my lightest color, the BG11, then defining the shadows with the BG13, and then deepening those up with the BG15. I know the caps on these markers, the BG13 and BG15 look uh, reversed, but the BG15 is actually darker than the BG13. So just blending that all together. And then I just want to leave that to dry for a minute before I color the honey so that I don't have any bleeding. 
uh, with the saturated paper there. So I'm going to move on to my flowers and I'm going to use R20, R22, and R24 for those. Just kind of doing a little simple shading on the right hand side of each of those flowers. I've uh, kept most of my shading on this image to the right side. So that will just um, be cohesive with the rest of the piece. So I'm also using the R22 and the R20 to color in his ears. For the leaves and the grass, I grabbed G21 and G24, just adding a little bit of the darker color towards the stem and then blending out with the lighter shade. And then I'm going to just color in a base coat um, at the bottom for my grass. And then I'll just begin flicking in the blades using those same two colors. And then I felt it just needed a little more definition, so I grabbed my G28 and began to flick in some blades of grass with that color as well. Going back to finish my honey, I grabbed Y11, Y13, and Y17. Just going in with my lightest shade first, and then adding the shadows of the Y13, deepening with the Y17, and then blending that all back together again. And now that our scene is finished, I can just set that aside and begin to assemble the card. So I'm using that Garden Party 6x6 by Pebbles that I showed you at the beginning. And I've cut my first piece of pattern paper here down to 2 inches tall by 4 and a quarter wide. And I'm just going to go ahead and adhere that to the bottom of my card base, which is uh, MFT's Pink Lemonade cardstock. Then I've got another piece that's two and three quarters by five and a half inches tall, and I'm just going to layer that right over top here. I really like using the Tombow Mono Multi um, for these because you can wiggle it around a little bit if you didn't line it up perfectly straight. My yellow honeycomb patterned paper is three and a quarter inches by three and a half inches. It's just slightly taller than it is wide. And I'm going to go ahead and adhere this little uh, tab here just for a little extra pattern along the edge of my focal panel. And that I just die cut out with an MFT uh, tab die. I'll just adhere that along the side and then set that aside to dry. And then I can glue down that yellow honeycomb piece right in the center. I'm going to tilt that a little bit to the right so that when I overlap my focal panel, it's going to be straight. So that focal panel does measure three inches by three and a quarter inches, so it's just slightly smaller than the yellow piece, and that is so that it will frame um, up the focal panel very nicely with a little bit sticking out the edges. So I just pop that up with some foam tape, and then I'm grabbing this Spectrum Noir glitter pen. This is brand new to me. I never used it before. Um, so I'm just adding a little glitter to the honey, the flowers, and the clouds. And I'm not sure if you can see that sparkle there, but it's really pretty in real life. So his pupils got covered up with the brown marker when I was coloring, so I decided to um, add them back in with a white jelly roll pen, but I didn't really like the look of that, so instead I grabbed my go-to, the black enamel accents, and added that over top with the uh, pointy end of my pick-me-up tool and that just makes them nice and shiny and bright and I think that really brought him to life much better than the white gel pen did. And that's going to complete our card for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll head over to the Newton's Nook blog and check out their April release. It's super cute. And uh, if you missed my last video, it's there for you on screen. You can just go ahead and click the little video clip and it'll take you right to it. Have a great day.